Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for another Why You Know Review, where I go over a series of projects, Gauntlet style, that I was not able to formally review individually over the past month. Now you know what it is, so let's do it. Why You Know Review, let's go. Ba bam <laughs> Uh, this record is long, and I feel like that's really all I can say about it definitively. I mean, the build-up to this project has taken years to this point, and the payoff is just so little, despite how much material is on this thing, because there are so many breezy songs, average vocal performances, so-so features. It's just not the stunning experience I hoped a Her album would eventually be. Her usual Rostam's music here is just covered in quirky but elegant guitars, keys, and beats. It's usually why I enjoy his production so much for other artists. But once again on this LP, he fails to really stun as a singer and a songwriter. And as long as this aspect of his work continues to lack bite, I think his records will continue to run pretty lukewarm. Unfortunately, this Chai record, as much as I was anticipating it, uh, kind of came out to be a mixed bag. The band really drifting away from their rock roots on this one in a series of style switch-ups that uh, kind of bop, but also flop, with the occasional bad vocal performance too, like on the opener. There is a lot of groovy pop potential through this record though, and now that the band has kind of broken the seal on what genres they can play with, I wonder what they'll do into the future. No, go, go. Next, go to the next one. Go to the next one. Just go to the... A few spicy singles to this new Lord Huron record had me looking forward to listening to it, but this thing pretty much ended up being just a faux, retro, overly reverbed indie rock and folk project with a slight country twist here and there. About as unexciting as it gets, especially with the performances on here, running so mild to the point where they're nearly elevator music. Plus the best spots on this thing just kind of remind me of artists I guess I would rather be listening to, be it M. Ward or Fleet Foxes. Football player turned underground indie phenomenon Exum on this record over here is a bit of a jack of all trades. Some indie pop on here, some experimental rap, and everything in between. There's plenty of bold, exciting, and eclectic ideas flowing throughout this project, but not a lot of strong songwriting to pull it all together. So maybe it'll be a more focused and robust album next time around. No doubt there are fans of this Danny Elfman album out there, and I was looking forward to it myself after some of the singles. But Lord, is this thing a mess. There are so many songs on this thing that are excruciating, annoying, obnoxious, and just so over the top and showy and theatrical. I, I can't, I just can't. It's like if you took the final Scott Walker record and the final David Bowie record, but you did everything that you could to make them unlistenable and unlikable. Yeah, that, that's about where you'd be landing with this. This is one of the funniest, most tongue-in-cheek, and most ridiculous projects I've heard from this new wave of terminally online rappers that uh, don't so much flow on the beat as much as they do over it. And for sure, there's absolutely something to this. I enjoy a lot of songs from this project myself, but there's a lot of tracks here, and Babytron doesn't exactly switch up his flow, his voice, or his delivery all that much. So while I think the baseline rap style and ideas that inform these tracks are good, are valid, to hear it just kind of redone over and over and over for a whole project, it does kind of feel like beating a dead horse. But Baby Tron is still young, lots of room to grow, lots of potential to move forward and do other things, and uh, it'll certainly be interesting to hear uh, what else he attempts to do or pull off later in his catalog. <laughs> The appeal of this band still eludes me to this day, unfortunately, especially on this project that sounds so big, but at its core, could not have been more safely performed and written, because this thing just kind of reads like some uh, very overly dramatic, glitzy, bland alt-rock with a sort of sad indie twist, I guess. The sort of thing that Lumineers or Mumford and Sons fans might want to listen to when they want to rock out. Or maybe for people who find Radiohead and Foxing a bit too spicy. Slater Kinney here with a new record, which uh, sort of feels like a bounce back from what was 
easily their worst record to date, the center won't hold. And even though they're going back in more of a straightforward rock direction, I suppose, the band still feels kind of lost and unsure of what to do. Because this project doesn't feature that classic Kinney sound, which is okay, you know, it's no cities to love. If you had to put the sound of this album in a nutshell, I guess you could say it's sometimes a little heavier than Slater Kinney's music uh, typically is, or maybe even trippier, but not going so far in those directions that it, it feels like a bold statement or a definitive one. All in all, it feels like a half-measured attempt at uh, experimenting once again and uh, not even coming out with a quarter of the excitement or the results of a record like The Woods. With five discs and two and a half hours of material, this new Sufjan Stevens record is easily one of the largest ambient projects to drop this year. This entire series of pieces was inspired by the passing of Sufjan's father, and many of these tracks range from two to five minutes. Each disc sort of has its own distinct personality, but everything sits pretty firmly into these beds of abstract, ambient, boundaryless walls of sound that dabble a bit in electronic music, in classical music. Not a whole lot of it was sticking with me, but I think Sufjan's attempt here was to make some very contemplative, emotive mood music, and this certainly serves as that. There are some strong, heavy, and gorgeous pieces on each disc of this project, but I found a, a majority of these tracks to not really be super evocative. But given this thing is so abstract, you as a listener are most likely going to have a very personal and individualized experience with this thing. You're gonna get out of it what you put into it. Um, some cutesy bedroom produced pop rap with super smooth, obnoxious lyrics and uh, a playful attitude uh, that, that essentially makes it sound like it's uh, ready to be implemented in like an Apple commercial. New Ski Mask tape over here, which I was uh, pretty excited to hear about the drop of because a Ski Mask track usually bangs, a Ski Mask feature usually hits incredibly hard, but I was, uh, I guess, sort of disappointed to find that we had another very scant assembly of tracks and uh, uh, songs here. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, so many years after Stokely being released, I, I was kind of hoping for something bigger, more ambitious, but uh, Ski Mask, unfortunately, despite his incredible talents and unique style and sound, uh, just continues to piecemeal his discography with these really skeletal batches of tracks that mostly all suffer from the same shortcomings. I guess from here, all I'm hoping for is just something bigger and better from Ski Mask. I feel like he's been kind of operating and performing at this level for a while now, and I mean, it, it's, it's time to sort of like push your incredible talents here to the limits. And I mean, we're just, we're just kind of not getting that. We're just kind of hanging in the green, maybe kind of touching up to the yellow every once in a while, but that's it. Formerly known as Dram, Shelley has come through the new record over here, which I uh, was really anticipating. I was excited to hear this one, especially given how much I loved Big Baby Dram and how disappointed I was that, you know, things kind of fell off the map past that record. Now, Shelley started to tease toward this album with some tracks that uh, seemed a bit more sensual and serious and uh, still showcase that, you know, uh, eclectic vocal flair that uh, he's known for. And uh, I was pretty excited at the prospect of, hey, maybe something a little bit more, you know, somber or something that's actually going to turn some heads and make people take Shelley a, a bit more seriously because as cool as Dram was, I feel like there weren't a lot of people kind of digging deep enough into uh, his talents under that moniker. And now this record is out. <sighs> And unfortunately, I feel like moving in this direction has just kind of re resulted in a drab project. Not only that, but some of the songs and performances on here are a little awkward. I mean, the Daft Punk cover is uh, just a non-starter for me. As of right now, I still hear a lot of potential in Shelley's music and obviously a super unique and bold and fantastic voice, but stylistically, mood-wise, I'm, I'm just not really sure where the music and everything can go from here. New soundtrack from Flying Lotus. New soundtrack, Flying Lotus, for the uh, animation project that he's uh, masterminding right now. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's cool. You know, it, it's not nearly as well connected, put together, or uh, 
uh, as, I guess, um, uh, tightly flowing as an album. I mean, it's, it's a soundtrack. You know, everything is kind of just fragmented because each piece is meant to kind of convey a different mood or complement a certain scene. But, uh, you know, I will say for what it is, it is uh, really cool to hear Flying Lotus's production once again in a different context, especially since I wasn't really crazy about uh, Flamagra all that much. Uh, yeah, this thing is uh, uh, disjointed with it being a soundtrack, but there's still a lot of uh, cool sound play and interesting sound palettes throughout this thing. Uh, if you're a Flying Lotus fan, don't miss out on this soundtrack because it kind of seems like a very dramatic beat tape of sorts in a way. So yeah, give it a shot. Zishin, have you given any of these projects a listen? Did you love them? Did you hate them? What would you rate them? Uh, what do you think I should review next? And what do you think about my voice sounding a little bit froggy today? Uh, uh, make sure to subscribe, hit that bell as well, and we will see you in the next one. Anthony Fantano, Why You Know Review, forever.